G'day guys, welcome to me lab. Now back in the early 90s when I was in school, we still had quite a few electric typewriters. In fact, in my business class, I was taught to type using an electric typewriter. But we were one of the first groups, at least at our school, to actually have access to a computing class, which was pretty exciting back in the day. I mean, my primary school had one computer in the entire school. So when I got to high school and there was actually a room with, I don't know, maybe 10 of them in there, I was pretty blown away. The only problem was our uh, our teacher at the time only seemed to know one thing to teach us. This is it, it makes it possible for me, even with my limited time, to do fun Windows programming. It was boring. So boring, in fact, that as soon as Dolly would leave... I should explain. Our, our computer teacher's name was Mr. Parton, and we uh, affectionately called him Dolly, all right? So as soon as Dolly would leave the room, I would just grab out whichever wheel of time book I was up to and just dive on into Randland instead of getting lost in Bill Gates land, because Bill Gates land is bloody boring. So when it comes to what I'm going to teach my students in my digital technologies class, well, I don't want them to be bored. I want to find ways to teach them and engage them so that they're learning skills, not just that they're having fun with in the moment, but also that is setting up their future too. And some of the, the well, one of the most popular and in-demand languages right now is Python. It's used in all sorts of different fields and, and a lot we're seeing it in data analytics and things like that, which is a massive growth area that my students may end up working in. So I could choose to teach them you know, data analytics with Python, or I could take a step back and think, how can we still impart some of the essential skills they need, such as things around structure and syntax, without them just being disengaged and bored, because data analytics is not gonna be fun to the average 13 year old, right? That is where Godot comes in. You see, when it comes to programming, the devil is often in the details, right? The nuances of, of syntax and structure that can sometimes be stumbling blocks to novice programmers. And this is where the symbiotic relationship between Python and GDScript really shines. Uh, much like Python, GDScript is characterized by readability um, and ease of use. So this allows students to focus on the, the logic of programming rather than getting bogged down by complex syntax rules. And both languages employ a, a high level dynamically typed style, which promotes sort of quicker, more intuitive coding as well. And they share similar constructs such as um, indentations, um, which you know, encourages writing clean and readable code and fostering, you know, good coding habits right from the outset. So this is why using GD script to teach Python is actually a feasible idea. Not only is it going to be really engaging because they can very quickly get um, results on the page in front of them with, with their game making, but it's going to set them up for learning other skills later down the line without even realizing it. All right, so what's the actual plan here? Well, the plan is to continue on from my Zero to Zelda tutorial series. I'm going to make a bunch of changes to it, and that's going to be the jumping off point for making a game that I've always wanted to play, a, a Zelda-like Wheel of Time RPG. So more than that, in fact, I want this game to remind me of the countless hours I spent playing MUDs during my teenage years. So the overall idea here is not to have amazing graphics, but to really tell the Wheel of Time story. And in so doing, I'm gonna be increasing my skills with GD Script and Godot, which is gonna make me better equipped to teach my students and my students are going to be able to learn things in a way that is way more engaging than if we had some really dry, um, you know, Python based um, do this, do this, do this, like individual tasks. So the idea is to create a more engaging, more interesting world, not only for my students, but for me as well. Um, and I hope that if you know a fair bit about this sort of thing, you can give me some advice along the way or you can follow along and actually pick up some ideas yourself. So obviously this is gonna be a Wheel of Time game, which I don't have the rights to. So this is not a commercial enterprise. This is just me using it as a vehicle to learn. And it's way easier to learn something when you're really engaged and invested in it, right? So for me, choosing Wheel of Time helps keep me motivated. And for my kids, uh, my students, it being game-based help, helps keep them motivated. So we're trying to find a way to tick all the boxes to make sure everyone is getting something out of it. 
moment. So I think the next stop is to show you what I have so far and then uh, let you know what we're looking to do in the next uh, little while before I, I come back and give you another devlog. So the general gist of how I'm gonna design this is very similar to the muds of my youth, right? So I'm gonna imagine the entire world as a series of tiles and each of those tiles is gonna represent a scene um, or a room that you can be in at that time. So what I've done so far is I've just got the, the Emmons field map here and over the top I've superimposed a couple of grids just to give you an idea and out towards the mountains of mist there is the L4 farm and that's the only grid that I've made at the moment but I'm just trying to paint a bit of a picture so you can get the overall idea and basically you're going to move your way through it's going to change scenes just like in in a mud you would hit you know north and then you would move into the north room and it would type out what's in there same sort of vibe here but just with with low res graphics right and here's a, a broader scale of what we're talking about so you can see uh right in the yeah, Emmons field spot there there's the grid that I've already made and I've just expanded it out so this is purely illustration purposes it's not going to actually look like this but just to paint a bit of a picture of what we're getting into so now let's jump into the game as it stands now um, so we'll have a bit of a play around you'll get a bit of a feel for where we're at and hopefully if you've got any ideas you can start feeding them to me in the comments all right let's jump in so here is our world let's run our scene all right, so there is our little Rand, right? Red hair, he's got his red coat already, and he's also got his hair and mark sword. We got some sheep and chickens wandering around the L4 farm. We got some flowers and things. The only enemy I've got at the moment is some snakes. Um, they're left over from my Bogan world, um, but we can kill our snakes still. And um, we got a little grunting sound as we fight. There's the stable. Um, and you can run around and explore uh, the Westwood, in particular the L4 farm. And we're just going to keep expanding that out, adding more and more detail, more and more areas, until I've got as much of the story as I can be bothered making. So thanks for sticking with me to the end. I hope that you're intrigued by what we're doing here. If you can contribute along the way to give me some tips and tricks, I would love to hear from you. But also, if you think you can learn from this, I will do my best to explain everything as we go along as well. It won't be a tutorial series, but I'll still um, give as many tips and tricks along Along the way that I have picked up doing it so that you too can benefit from it. Thank you very much and I'll see you next time.